So I've divided this talk into two parts. The first part, I'm going to present to you the way that some people define this thing called the sharing economy, some facts about it as far as we know them. Then we're going to have a bit of a group discussion. And then the second part is presenting some emerging views about the strengths and maybe the dark sides or the critique of uh, this thing called the sharing economy. Um, so, and then, we, then of course we can have some more discussion. So uh, why this topic, just briefly to introduce. Um, obviously working for the New Economics Foundation, we like to think that we uh, have space to um, talk about emerging trends and, and when you know, things are creating some excitement that that's something which we can try and talk about. And certainly the sharing economy uh, is very much a exciting um, thing that's happening. People are talking about it. Even the government has got very excited about it in the UK and elsewhere. So uh, it seemed that this is a really good place for us to come and discuss what this might mean. So uh, the first part, defining the sharing economy. Um, now, when we're talking about defining things, I always like to quote the late, great David Fleming. Uh, I hope some of you here saw him speak. Uh, an amazing speaker, and he once said this about definitions. It's a good thing to avoid definitions, they only confuse things. <laughs> so with that caveat, I will now attempt to see if we can define the sharing economy. The first thing to say, I've chosen the phrase sharing economy, but I could equally have chosen the phrases peer-to-peer -peer economy or collaborative consumption, uh, even the access economy people have talked about, and, uh, and also the mesh. Uh, by uh, an author who wrote a book called The Mesh and has a great interest in everybody calling it The Mesh so that they buy uh, the book. But uh, not wanting to be cynical, um, what one of the things this might immediately tell you is that there are competing sort of tribes almost. There are, there, this, this is a contested space. But whatever this thing is that we're about to explore, um, people give it different labels. So this is very much an emerging uh, kind of field. Which of these things are we even going to call it? I don't know. But hopefully, I mean, maybe I'll just test I mean, how many of you have heard at least one of these phrases or, or one or more of these phrases uh, coming up in, in a, yeah, I mean, uh, quite a fair few of you. Um, so that's good. Um, we'll, we'll find out how many of you think you're experiencing participating in this as one of the things we're going to discuss later. So those are, the, uh, those are the sort of phrases. Now, how do people define what the sharing economy is? Well, let's start with the people who share. This is a, an organisation set up to promote the sharing economy. Uh, this is a little bit wordy. This is the most wordy of the ones, really. The sharing economy is a socio-economic ecosystem built around the sharing of human and physical resources. It includes the shared creation, production, distribution, trade and consumption of goods and services by different people and organisations. Now, you might ask, well, what is left out? Uh, of that definition. This is the, probably the broadest definition. So there are some that, that do hone it down a bit. But that's interesting to note in itself that in terms of this new space, the sharing economy, some people are, 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 are defining it so broadly as you actually wonder how helpful the uh, concept is in describing something uh, in a usable way. Here are two more. So um, share the world's resources, STWR, uh, an NGO. Now they talk about the sharing economy leverages information technology. Now this is an important component. Um, sharing has been around as long as humans have. So what, what is new here? Well, one of the new elements definitely is technology and how that's intervened in some of this human activity and what does that mean? They say it empowers individuals or organizations to distribute, share and reuse excess capacity in goods and services. Nesta, the National Endowment for Society, Technology and Arts, uh, are doing a lot of work in this space. I should be uh, drawing on one of their reports shortly. Um, now, they prefer to call about, uh, use the phrase collaborative economy. They say that involves using internet technologies, so technology again, an important component, to connect distributed groups of people, make better use of goods, skills and other useful things. So uh, you can see there's some common threads kind of arising. We'll draw those out in a minute. Final sort of definitions, mesh. So what's the mesh? A mesh company uses modern technology. There's technology again. And social networks. This is another important element. It tends to come in. Social networks. 
to provide people with goods and services without the burden and expense of owning them outright. So those of you feeling burdened by your possessions will quite like uh, this, this, this idea. And finally, the Department for Business, Innovation and Skills. In the UK, part of the UK government, they say the sharing economy is about sharing your possessions, time and skills with people through online peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces. So uh, even the UK government has got in the act on defining what this thing is. And they've just launched a consultation, actually, which all of you can uh, email the, the person running it to tell her what you think about this, I guess, um, because they want to know how to maximise the benefit of the sharing economy for the UK. So uh, what are these companies now? I'd be astonished if there aren't at least two or three of these um, various logos and names of companies that you don't recognise, and I'd be surprised if there wasn't at least one that you have transacted with. <laughs> so how many people have bought or sold on eBay? Most people, how, did you use PayPal to pay? You probably did. Any subscribers to Netflix? Yeah, there's a few here. Now, interestingly, these are considered um, precursors actually to the sharing economy. Some of these have been around quite a long time, in, well in internet <laughs> terms anyway, quite a long time. And this is e-commerce companies, trading companies, and you know, rentals to Netflix, you can you know, effectively rent you know, TV programs and films with a monthly subscription, so that's a rental model. Um, Zipcar, one of the early um, sort of car sharing models, but ended up being bought by one of the main car rental companies. So it's really, um, some of these, you can see that they're, they're kind of familiar types of models. Now, the new wave are considered to, uh, of sharing economy companies are considered to be a little bit different. Here are some examples of some well-known ones. Airbnb, hands up if you have used Airbnb. Right, okay, about half. Um, has anybody heard at least of companies Lyft and Uber? Yeah. You've used, okay, so we've got, which one? Both, Both. okay, we've got, uh, um, uh, it's unfortunate you've admitted to that because we're gonna be panning Uber later on for uh, their behavior. Etsy, um, anybody, does anybody know what Etsy is? Yeah, <laughs> fantastic, we've got a complete sharing economy <laughs> person in the audience, fantastic. Etsy, uh, uh, and I, I mean, they are an online platform for sort of craft producers uh, to buy and sell their goods. So they, they provide access to sort of high quality craft products. Uh, with, e with an e-commerce platform. Um, TaskRabbit is one where you quite simply are offering your services to do any manner of sort of odd jobs or things that you can offer. And it's a clearing place for, for, for sort of short-term, almost odd jobs in consultancy. Um, Just Park, if you, have, uh, if you live near anywhere in the UK where there's a shortage of parking and you've got a drive, you can rent it out to people to park their car in it. That's Just Park. So spin lister, um, not using your mountain bike for a couple of weeks because you're going away, you could rent it out to somebody. Yeah, so um, I mean, these are interesting models that you can see how, well, okay, well that bike wasn't gonna get used, somebody can now use it, that's great because we're getting more use out of the bike. This is sort of quite efficient use of resources. Little bit of income for the owner of the bike. Um, okay, it's all looking good. And BRB, uh, you know, is a new sideline for people who, uh, you know, have got spare rooms or are leaving their property free for a couple of weeks when they go on holiday, they can rent it out. That's a little bit of income. Uh, you know, so, so these, these are some examples of, of sharing economy companies that are, now a lot of this is quite big. These are, these are now getting, these are big Silicon Valley tech companies. A lot of these getting quite valuable, which is an issue that we'll return to. So those are some examples of sharing economy. Now you won't be able to read any of these, but you just get a nice sense of all these nice symbols. Um, this is from uh, Meshing It, which is a website which allows you to find sharing economy companies, or what they would call it, companies in the mesh. Uh, and I mean, I'll, I'll read some of the you know some of the categories here. You can you've got a category about entertainment, energy, food and drink, uh, mobility, kids stuff, home improvement. Um, Health and fitness, uh, you know, DIY sort of things that, you know, there'll be a business there that presumably you can finance and economics. I'd quite like to know what people are sharing in finance and economics. I'm missing a trick here. I should be offering my services under finance and economics, clearly. Government, 
uh, even. So, so these, so th I'm just giving you the picture here that there are a lot of different areas where there are companies that are, are offering some kind of facility for you to collaboratively consume or collaboratively produce stuff perhaps or share learning and knowledge. I mean, Wikipedia, I suppose, is, is a sort of great example of that. Uh, oh, and of finance. Finance is a massive sector. So there are lots of peer-to-peer -peer lending companies, crowdfunding companies springing up all the time, uh, which are also considered to be part of the sharing economy. So that's what people share. Who is sharing? Now, apologies if you can't sort of read the, the detail on here, but this is from Nesta's most recent report, uh, which has just come out, Making Sense of the UK Collaborative Economy. And I thought the next two slides would be useful to give you some, some broad statistics about how, well, how big is this? How many people uh, think that they are participating in the sharing economy? And uh, last year, say Nesta, um, one out of four of us uh, used the internet to take part in collaborative activities. Out of interest, how many of you used the inter internet to partake in a collaborative activity over the last year? Wow, that's way more than 25%. What uh, extremely um, advanced new economy people you are. Now, what's quite interesting actually is that the 25% um, is, is that top sort of quadrant there that's striped, but well over half of people said that they had participated in collaborative activities, but mostly not using, nothing to do with the internet which is a nice little reminder that the idea of getting together to collaboratively consume, group buying maybe of things, or to produce stuff together, or sharing learning or skills, um, or, even, or even sort of uh, informal lending practices, I suppose, have always been taking part, and quite often are still taking part with nothing to do with modern technology. But the growth area is in that internet technology enabled part. And that just says all the various things. The biggest one is clothes and accessories. Uh, people swapping clothes. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I always give, you know, we, you know when, when our son grows out of his clothes, we give them to, you know, my nephews, and, you know, that, that's presumably collaborative consumption. So that's something which everyone would have been doing, you know, for, for, for generations. Now, a lot of information on there, but it says one thing, and that is, there is a, if you are participating in the online sharing economy, you're probably uh, middle-aged, white, and middle class. You probably have a family uh, and you've probably got a job. Um, whereas if you're old or very young, minority ethnic, you know, lower socioeconomic groups, as the advertisers uh, you know, grade them, uh, not in, not in full-time work, um, then you're probably not getting involved. Now that's, you could say, well, you know, um, does that matter? Well, it, it sort of does, doesn't it? Because if we are creating a new way of people having social and economic relationships, then we don't really want to introduce one that is exclusive in any way. And that's worrying, because you want to have participation equally across all sectors of the population. So um, that's just something to note. Uh, when we talk about the sharing economy, it's quite interesting to ask ourselves, well, who is participating? And is there, from a social justice point of view, is this something which everybody's able to participate in? And if not, then why not? And what can we do about it? And there are regional differences as well. It tends to be the south. Uh, and, and interestingly, slightly more rural. If you're in rural areas, you seem to be more likely to participate. Now, how big is it? Here are some numbers. Uh, I'm an economist. I can't obviously have to have numbers in a presentation. Here are some numbers. So Price Waterhouse Coopers, uh, one of my old employers, uh, brought out a uh, report, one of those great ref reports that sort of says, well, it could generate 9 billion of revenue for the UK by 2025. Uh, and they think it's about half a billion today. Five key sectors it dropped off the, the bottom, actually, but um, that includes that peer-to-peer -peer finance sector, which is one of the fast-growing ones. Uh, so, yeah, big growth expected. Um, I mean, nine billion, to be honest, in, in, in the context of the UK's total number of transactions every year, which is about one and a half trillion, isn't, isn't massive, but it is growing significantly. And in some sectors, it's very significant. Globally, they say, well, this could be big news by 2025, 230 billion of revenue uh, ascribed to this collaborative economy. And as I was saying, there are certain sectors where you do get very high market shares. So if you're talking about car sharing, car rental, and holiday accommodation, 
you know, Airbnb and the lift sharing companies are making big inroads into those particular activities, uh, significant for those sectors, uh, as disruptive as, as, uh, as it tends to be called. So um, it's growing quite quickly and it's quite big, particularly in some sectors. Now, um, the final bit that I want to talk about in this session before we have a discussion uh, about your experiences, I want to hear about your experiences and your thoughts about what we've heard so far, is what's driving it? And, um, okay, this is where I've actually done a bit of thinking rather than just presenting what other people think. And uh, I think there's three broad driving forces behind this. The first is the economy. And uh, really there's... there's um, a big boost to the whole idea of collaborative consumption, production, sharing, was the Great Recession after the financial crisis. Uh, initially, there was a big driver. People had less income. They were looking for cheaper ways maybe to get around, or they were quite keen to get some extra income by, getting, you know, by doing some lift sharing themselves and getting money in or letting out your spare room. So there, was a, there was a straightforward economic driver towards uh, getting more out of your own stuff or trying to find a cheaper way of doing stuff. Uh, that's one of the big drivers. Um, you could say that actually as uh, the relative price of you know, environmental goods goes up because of hitting ecological constraints, that that will be even more of a driver. Now this is a sort of positive aspect because one of the ways we can you know, experience high levels of well-being and, 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 and a, you know, a rich way of life without wrecking the planet is to use much more effectively all the assets we currently have. So this is a sort of positive thing about the sharing economy that people will, you know, will argue, and I think there's something to that. The second driving factor we talked about is technology, and particularly smartphones and apps. So you know, um, the computer in your hand is particularly useful if you want to access a new form of taxi service off the street, and you, know, you can do it there or then. Um, that's one of the big things, smartphone adoption, and in, in lots of key markets, uh, the number of adults with a smartphone is going over 50%. It's over 50% in the UK and in the USA uh, and lots of economies. It's hitting that critical threshold where more than half of the adult population have a smartphone. Um, and the second part of that technology driver is the ability to make payments on that smartphone. Not just payments to big companies, but payments to other people, other individuals. Via various, you know, PayPal is obviously one of the things that's enabled this. So then it becomes possible for me to transact with you directly as another individual rather than just buying from you know Walmart or, or Waitrose or, or you know a large transport company or whatever so that's very important for enabling the uh, the sharing economy and then finally culture so Facebook's got a lot to answer for in many ways uh, but uh, the the ability to have reputation, online uh, visibility about whether or not you think somebody, you would want, do I want to stay in somebody's flat? Now, pre-social media, pre um, the ability to maybe sort of suss somebody out without having met them, it, you know, it'd be a bit more of a risk to just go and stay in somebody's flat he didn't know. But now, because you can look at their Facebook profile or you can look on social media and there's sort of reputation, there's, there's, there's feedback that goes on there. So TripAdvisor, for example, uh, does this for traditional uh, hotels, restaurants and, and b and So there's this whole world where we're able to um, know more about other people or establishments in a, you know, over the other side of the world. But pre the internet age, it would have been very difficult to know. And that culturally has made us, I think, more accepting of um, the ability to, to transact with people that, that don't even live anywhere near us. Um, and in fact, you know, the author of that Price Waterhouse report was sort of arguing that in many ways the sharing economy is a throwback to an earlier age where people uh, did a lot of relation, had a lot of transactions and exchanges on trust because in a community you knew everybody quite well and there was a high degree of trust and social capital. And the argument is that in the world of social media and the ability to, you know, you can extend that trust over many, many more people across different countries even. And that's a sort of cultural change that enables and drives this new internet-enabled sharing economy uh, as well as the economic driver. So, so these forces, you know, would think they're only going to probably increase in intensity. So the sharing economy, whichever word you want to use for it is on that basis is quite likely to just yeah continue to grow and be a bigger part of our lives 
And so um, at this point, I want to... So I haven't really expressed too many opinions on it now. At least I don't think I have. So this is what I think, this is what people are saying about it, how they define it, it's broadly what sort of companies, who's doing it, how big is it, what's driving it. So now I think I would really appreciate a discussion with all of you about your personal experiences of it and what you feel about it. And then after we've done that, we'll come back and I'll present to you some, uh, some more opinions about people who've said good and bad about what's going on and we can have another discussion.